So today I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on what settings you need to use to engrave images with your laser engraver on wood and make them look a lot better than the results you are already getting. But before we get into that, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor, and that is Munbin, the thermal labor printer company. As you can see, they've sent me one of their thermal laser printers, which I can easily use within my day-to-day -day business of not only printing shipping labels, but I can also print out little stickers, stick on the envelopes, just to say thank you to my customers. Now, this printer was a very easy to set up. I literally plugged it in, and then on the front of the box, there is a QR code you need to scan, which will take you to the App Store. Now, with that, you'll be able to download the app directly to your phone. And as long as you've got your Bluetooth turned on, you can connect to the printer immediately. It is a very simple process to do. You just open up the app, open up the connection tab, find the printer you got, click and connect. It literally takes about 30 seconds. So as I mentioned, this is a thermal printer, so it does not require any sort of ink to work. So you will never run out when in the middle of any jobs. So how this works is you control it through the app. You'll feed in the type of label you'll be printed on. Now this does auto detect the size of paper you're putting in. So if I'm putting in a big label to print a shipping label on, or if I'm printing on a small sticker, the printer knows why I've loaded inside. So the printer will automatically detect that and know what size to print on. So it's so simple to use. Once you've created your printing label, you can just import that into the app with the correct size already selected from the printer. You just import in and press print. It is that simple. Same again with the small round stickers. You can create your own little design or oh, they do have thousands of free designs already available on the app. So I created my own. It is just a vector image of myself and then just saying thank you with my YouTube name on and I can print out as many of them as I like. I can do one, I can do five, I can do a hundred at one time if I want. Now I have been using this printer now for about two weeks to print my labels out and I have mentioned it does have a 0.001% jam rate but I myself have not had a single jam on the printer and I've printed well over a hundred different labels on different materials and it's printed perfect every single time. So yeah, big thanks to today's sponsor, Munbin. I will put a link down in the description if you want to check them out. As makers, this machine would be absolutely perfect for any of you because it does speed up the process of printing out your labels. So the link will be down in the description and I will also provide a promotion code which can give you up to 10% off. So let's get into it. We all know engraving on wood is an absolute pain. We've all come across it when trying to engrave on image on wood. It has just come out absolutely nothing like we want it. And I believe it just comes down to two things which are affecting the way these images are engraved. Number one, it is the type of wood we are all using. Now, anyone with a laser will be familiar with birch plywood. It is the go-to wood for cutting things out with your laser engraver, be it boxes or key rings or anything like that. And this stuff is also really good for engraving like vector line art on. So as you can see, these are two designs I have engraved vector line art on with no problem whatsoever. They both come out nice and dark really even all the way through and i've also been able to cut these out on a diode laser without any problem but what happens when we try to engrave an actual image on wood like this so here's an image i've done so this has been prepared properly for laser engraving so i've increased the dpi on it increased the sharpness and i've put it in with the right settings now looking at this straight on it doesn't look that good but if you get in the right light it does actually look quite decent but again it's just down to the type of wood i've engraved it on so if i tilt it you should be able to see a lot more detail than you do when you're looking at it straight on so if i engrave this on some other material like mdf for example i should get a much better result on that because mdf doesn't have any sort of grain and that's exactly what i've done here so if we look at these side by side we can see the MDF one has a lot more detail. You can see all the highlights and all the shadows from the image, as opposed to this one on the birch plywood, where it's kind of just filled it all in, that there's not much gradient to it. But again, both of these were engraved with the exact same settings, all set up at 300 DPI using the gray scale option in Lightburn. I will put the settings up on the screen if you want to check them out. But this is done with a 22 watt diode laser. I mean, if yours is less or more powerful, your settings will vary. 
but it is something you will need to play around with but you really don't need a lot of power when it comes to wood now let's have a look at another example of an image that was just designed purposely to use with laser engravers but as you can see again this has come out really really nice but you can only see all the details when you look at it from a certain angle. Again, it's because of the type of wood we used. If you do find you are having problems, you've tried every setting you can to engrave the image on wood and it's not turning out just right, change the type of wood you are using and I guarantee you, you'll have a much better result, especially if you go to something like MDF. So that's the eagle in front of the American flag there. But again, it has come out really good. And that is because this image was specifically designed to use with laser engravers. Again, a high DPI, whatever DPI your image is at. So this is a 300 DPI in your software. So for example, with Lightburn, set the DPI in the software exactly the same as the image. Because again, that's going to help them work together and give you a much better result. So let's have a look at this again on MDF. Again, same settings are used, but you can see on the MDF, it has come out with a lot more detail. And again, you can look at it straight on. You can see everything in there because there's no grain in the MDF whatsoever. And lastly, I did engrave this image on a slate as well, just to show you how clean and detailed this image does actually come out. So as you can see, when it's engraved on something smooth, you do get a much, much better result. So to prepare the slate, I did sand it down to make it as smooth as possible and spray it with a very thin layer of black satin paint. And then as you can see, that has come out absolutely phenomenal. Again, this was just engraved on a diode laser, exactly the same settings of what I done on the wood. All I did was just invert the image with the option in Lightburn. So if you do want to try this out using files specifically designed for laser engraving, I will put a link down in the description where I got this one from. It's from an Etsy page called Laser Burn File. Like I said, specifically designed for laser graving in mind, and the files are very, very reasonably priced, and there's lots of different variations on there. So if you want to check them out, at the time of recording this video, he was doing a massive sale. Get over there now, guys, get yourself a couple of files, do it cheap, and definitely give them a go, see how your results turn out. So there we go, guys. It was just a very quick one, covering some problems I've seen people have when trying to engrave on wood themselves with their lasers. Just remember to pre-prepare your image beforehand. So try and get the highest DPI on your image as possible because that will work out the best for you. And then don't forget to replicate that number in your software. So if you're going 300 DPI on your image, go 300 DPI in the software. Make sure you're selecting the right type of material. So again, something with a deep and heavy grain isn't always going to give you the best results. So try and get something a bit smoother, something maybe like balsa wood or again MDF does give you really good results. And it is just setting up then the correct speeds and powers for your laser and then don't forget to select the option grayscale. I know a lot of people say to use like Jarvis and Stucky and stuff like that but grayscale all the way it'll give you the best results especially when using like a diode or a fiber laser this is the option you should be selecting when engraving your image regardless of the material so i hope you enjoyed the video guys and you did take something from this and also don't forget to check out today's sponsor munbin again i'll put a link down in the description if you want to check them out and if you're not already don't forget to subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up like the video and we will see you in the next one so